What's up guys, LOH with Low Tech, and this is going to be a, a belated review of the Cetus 3D Mark II. So this review has been a long time coming. It's been delayed a lot uh, for a number of reasons. When I first got this printer back in May of last year, I had a very rough idea of the angle that I wanted this review to cover. This was a 399 printer, had very tight tolerances when printing and could print at a very respectable 280 millimeters on the Z axis. So a number of things have happened since then that have delayed this review and changed the mentality that I've had to approach this review. Uh, so sorry that it's been so delayed and hopefully it is still relevant to somebody who is looking to buy a CS 3D Mark II. Right off the bat, what does this printer do that makes it unique? The, the biggest things that make it unique are the linear rails. The, the linear rails are actually much better than the, the spinning screw or something like, and pretty much any of the other FDM style printer methods. Uh, the tolerances are very, very good on linear rails so your print quality is going to be much more exact. The other main advantage is its ecosystem. It is a very closed system in the fact that the company that makes the printer also makes their own software and their software is very easy to use. Um, it's very user friendly for, for, new, for new people and, and also the whole process between getting the printer started to printing is very easy. So, you know, it's probably the closest I've seen in terms of a 3D printer acting like a normal paper printer. So why did this review get delayed? And that really has three main parts. So when I got this printer, I got this for to review. It was a $3.99 printer. I felt that that was a, a fair price for the ease of use of the printer as well as for the ability to print so tall. There are obviously companies out there that are making printers bigger than that for less than $3.99, but the, the issue was that they don't actually do their own software too. So there wasn't quite so much as a good marriage between the software side and the hardware side. Whereas the Cetus, the same company does both. So everything works very, very well. But since I got the Cetus, the price has unfortunately increased. It is now in the $4.99 range, give or take a sale. At $3.99, you're already starting to get outside of the realm that people would pay for a good 2D printer. So trying to sell them on something new would be harder to do. They do still sell the standard version at $3.99. So the one that only prints about 180 millimeters tall. Um, the build volume for that one is 180 by 180 by 180. This is 180 by 180 by 280. That one is a good option. The print quality is the same. The features are the same, things like that. It no longer really stands out for what it can do because really, you know, 280 is kind of unique. 180 is not so much. You could get something like the Anycubic, which would have a bigger build volume and it'd be significantly cheaper. So that was the reason one. The printer is now a lot more expensive. It now targets a different audience because of how much more expensive it is, 25% more. So reason two was the printer is now obsolete. It is no longer the latest and greatest that Cetus has released. There is now the Cetus Mark III. Granted, there are only a few differences between the Mark II and the Mark III. Most of the differences are more polished than they are new features. It's more moddable. It, it now supports the, a heated build plate as not a beta. It's really, you know, it's designed to, to use it right from the get-go. But for the most part, they're still very much the same. Even still, this is a Mark II. They now sell a Mark III. That's kind of like saying, I'm reviewing last year's iPhone. They're almost the same, but nobody cares about a review from last year's iPhone. That kind of pushed the, the review to the back burner. It was no longer a priority because I was no longer reviewing the best model that Cetus actually was making. Reason number three for the review being delayed was it broke. So this printer, the ease of use printer, the high quality printer broke. And at the time I was moving, I got a you know, new space and I didn't really have the time to kind of monkey around with this one to see what was the issue. So I put it on the back burner again, three back burners down now um, until I finally had a chance to, to look at it and uh, found that the, the extruder was no longer extruding because it was no longer gripping on to the filament to push it out through the extruder. So the extruder motor was still working fine. The extruder had like the, 
the, the hot end was still working just fine, but the way that the gearing was working, it was no longer gripping the filament to push it through. The way that the printer is designed, it was not something like, oh, I could print a new part and do it again. It was just, it doesn't work that way. Uh, unlike, say like the mono price where I, I could print a brand new piece that would feed the extruder through better than the default. It didn't have that. So this is the broken piece. Uh, if you have a Cetus Mark II that has this piece right here, this is the part that failed. Um, so everything else still works. Fan still works, hot end still works, motor still works. Uh, the connectors are still just fine. This is all, this assembly here is all 3D printed. I'm guessing that over time, the 3D print just can't withstand the, the strength of the spring that they're using. Uh, and so it no longer has enough tension to push, like to grip onto the filament to feed it through. That's a guess, not sure. They kind of redid where the, the filament now goes through in the top a little bit to make it a little bit easier. And they uncovered one metal side here to make it so you could see the hot end, which I'm guessing the only reason they're doing that is because so you can see the logo for Cetus, whereas the logo is still here on the other one. It's just hidden behind the protector. So now you have the, the joys of being able to touch 200 degree Fahrenheit, 100 and something degree Celsius hot end with your bare fingers if you want to. With the printer now working, I could finally make this review, which is now so late. So should you get one of these printers? Uh, there's really only three reasons why you should get a, a Mark II, Mark III, they're very much the same, is if you needed something that printed very high quality in terms of tolerances, like the differences between print to print should be very, very minute because of how good linear rails are, as well as how accurate it is in terms of putting filament where you want the filament. So there are still gonna be the same downsides of FDM versus something like SLA, but for the most part, this is probably one of the most accurate FDM printers you can get right now. So that's reason one. Reason two would be if you need something very small in terms of desk space that actually can print fairly large. A lot of 3D printers have a lot of extra space needed for their components or for whatever. This doesn't have a screen, it doesn't have anything. It does have a really annoying beep um, for everything and a very bright light, which is kind of annoying, but there's nothing else that would take up real estate on your desk, on your table, on whatever. It just is a very compact package and printing at 180 by 180, that's big enough to print most things people are gonna need. And especially if you get the extended one, you go to 280 tall, you could print a pretty good size like vase or like a, a statue or whatever part you needed that was actually very, very tall and still had to be in a very, very small space. If you kind of look at these two printers, this prints at, you know, 210 millimeters square and this one prints at 180 millimeters square. This is a huge printer in comparison, and it's still much smaller than a lot of other ones. This one is a very much more dainty looking thing, but at the same time, it's still pretty rugged. You know, they're, like this is screwed on, all the pieces are together. There are very few places for it to go wrong. The third reason why you might want this printer would be how easy it is to use. So from turning it on to printing, I could define to print pretty much anything in you know a paragraph like do this do this do this do this do this do this done and 95 percent of the time they would be getting out great prints and not have to worry about it whereas with a printer that uses something like cura or another piece of software simplify 3d you can do that for a lot of prints but most of the time you're going to want to adjust the settings at least a little bit every single time you print whether it be because you're changing filaments, so you wanna make the hot end a little bit hotter or a little bit cooler, or maybe you have a lot of like intricate work at the bottom, so you wanna make the first layer go really slow, or you know, a whole lot of different things. Those are things you have to worry about with most FDM printers. You really don't need to worry about that with the Cetus because the software it uses only works for all tier time devices. Tier time is the parent company it covers all of that. So unless there was for some reason you needed to drastically adjust the print head temperature or something like that, 
there's almost no settings that you can change even in their software. Um, you can you know, adjust the filament temperature up and down and that's really about it. Other than that, they have normal, fast and fine print qualities, that's it. You can change the nozzles on here. So you have, it does have a removable nozzle, so which you can put in so 0.2 millimeters, 0.4 millimeters, 0.6 millimeters. There's a whole video I did about the quality differences between all of those. But for the most part, every single print is gonna do the exact same thing. So if you tell somebody how to print it one time, they'll know how to do it every single time going forward, um, no matter what they're printing, which is great if you're not very technology savvy or you don't wanna deal with all these really tiny, minute details all the time. Um, what you'd have to do with most other 3D printers. Or if you have, say, like a classroom environment and there's a lot of people using the printer and you don't want to have to fiddle with everybody's different requests, unless there is an extreme exception, this is going to give you out a final print that is just exactly what you're expecting. So that's what's great about it. Most of the downsides for the CDIS are have to do with price. For $500, it does not have a heated build plate. It just has this like a rock solid metal sheet here, which is fine for printing PLA, but if you wanted to do something else, something that requires a heated build plate, it is not available, at least outside of a beta build, heated build plate that you can get for the Mark II that is sold separately, so an additional added cost. There is a lot of competition for printers under $500. So you can get something like the Anycubic, for example, which is a printer that I've already done a review for. It's a great printer. I use it all the time. And it costs roughly half the price of the, of the Cetus, but it has the heated build plate. You know, it has a much larger build area. It's just, you know, not quite as user friendly. So it's a little bit of a trade-off if you're new to 3D printers or you're gonna be interacting with a lot of people who are new to 3D printers, then the CDIS is a great option for that. But I feel like that's a very small market compared to somebody who's using it as a hobbyist or somebody who actually wants to kind of wet their feet in 3D printing. Another downside for the CDIS would be while the print quality is great in terms of you know, the accuracy of the parts, you are forced to use a raft in most cases because of the way that the printer is designed with the four screws at the bottom of the build area. So the raft is required and the way the raft, they do the raft inside the CDIS software is smart in terms of speed. It, the raft goes down very, very fast. So it doesn't really add a whole lot of time to your printing, but it does lower the the quality of the first layer in your print because since they chose to do something for more speed, the bottom layer is a little bit more textured than say something you would get on another 3D printer, which would have a very flat, even surface on the bottom. Usually the bottom layer is the best layer, whereas in the Cetus, it's actually probably the worst layer. So should you get one? And <laughs> If you can get the Cetus Mark II on sale, then you might want to pick it up over the Mark III, but in most cases, you're going to want the Mark III. Should you get the Mark III? Unless you are really interested in their software experience, or you are looking for something that has very reliable print quality, in most cases, you'd be better off getting something for either less money or going for something the same amount of money with bigger build volume and more features. Uh, the Cetus just is a little under-featured for what it provides outside of its software. Its software is great. You know, if you are looking to just drag a file in and hit print and expect the file to be printed correctly, it's great. But if you are used to any other 3D printer, you know that, you know, it does require a little bit of finesse to get each print exactly the way you want, then you could save hundreds of dollars or buy two printers and be happy with that too. There is really nothing out there like the Cetus, especially for $500 or under. It is really the closest thing we have to a 2D printer, a paper printer, but that does 3D files. But at four to $500, most people getting into 3D printing as a hobby are more likely going to 
be better off spending less money with, for more features or getting uh, something with a bigger build volume that is a little bit more useful in the long run. Thanks for watching guys, this is LH with Low Tech and this has been a quick review of the Cetus 3D Mark II. Subscribe.